the, the sixth tip I have on soul winning is basically to stay dedicated till the very end. Because a lot of times you go soul winning and, you know, you go for hours and nobody gets saved. I, I remember one time I went for more than six hours in South Tempe, not a single person saved, not even a single conversation. And I was just, and I had to meet people at the church to go soul winning at 5.30, but I said, no, I want to keep going until I get somebody saved in this street. The last house, not a single conversation, I hit hundreds and hundreds of doors, the last house, on that corner, I got that person saved. I rushed back and got to the church just in time to meet everybody else. But I, I was dedicated to the very end. You know, God sometimes is looking for people who are willing to, you know, just do it. And then He's going to bless your effort. And then later on that night, I went to for an hour and a half and got six people saved in an hour and a half. Three separate conversations. And, I mean... It, a lot of times that happens. Usually when I get soul winning and I get a lot of people saved, it's usually not the first couple hours to get people saved. It's usually at the very end. So, I mean, look, people say, well, the soul winning doesn't work. Well, if you go 59 minutes and 59 seconds every week, it probably doesn't work for you. You're going to very rarely see someone get saved. But if God sees you putting in the time, you know, the Holy Spirit is going to work, empower you, and God's going to bless you. You're going to get people to talk to if you spend the extra time. So spend the extra time. Those souls will get saved. Now, another tip I have on soul winning is... Um, to go in depth. You know, if you have someone who's willing to listen to you, most people don't want to listen to you. So if they're willing to listen to you, spend the extra time to make sure they understand that it's eternal life. Once saved, always saved. They, they have to believe that. To be saved. I mean, salvation comes down to what you believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. People think that, um, <coughs> People think that you can believe that you have to be baptized, be saved, or that you can believe you can lose your salvation. I mean, what what do you have to believe in if, if you can believe that? I mean, it says, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us, eternal life. And this life is in his Son. We have to believe the record is eternal life in his Son. If we believe we can lose our salvation, that's not eternal life. We have to believe it's truly a gift. It says the gift of God is eternal life. If you believe it's mostly a gift, that Jesus paid most of it, but i got to be baptized to help cover the rest, or not commit a bad sin like suicide, you're not believing it's a gift. So let's go in-depth, and, you know, there's no point of praying with someone who doesn't believe. Sometimes people talk to people, and they say, well, you don't believe, can I pray with you? That's not going to get them saved. It comes down to what they believe. So, you know, make sure you spend the time to explain eternal security. <coughs> Usually I give examples with people, and explain how, you know, even if you committed murder, and I ask them to make sure I see what's in their heart. I don't just tell them this is the truth. I ask them, well, what if you killed someone? Do you lose your salvation? And if they understand you, then I'll pray with them. But I, will, I make sure they believe it's eternal life. If they're willing to listen, spend the time, do it right. Treat it like it's like your, your brother that you're talking to, that you want to make sure he understands. Um, another example I have on soul winning is, um, <clears throat> kind of talked about this a little bit, but focusing on believe instead of the prayer. You know, it's not the prayer that saves you. It says, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him. You know, people take a couple verses in Romans and say salvation is a prayer. I mean, a lot of these people in these Howells Anderson churches, a lot of these different churches, it's all about the prayer. That if they don't believe, you know, just pray with them. You know, it's not about the prayer. Spend the time on explaining believing. Not about just getting to pray with them. I mean, just explain, you know, how it's believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Explain how it's eternal life. You don't have to do anything. It's a free gift. That's what we need to focus our time on. That's what, what God focuses his time on in the Bible. When people give him the gospel. Jesus talking to Nicodemus. How many times in there in John chapter 3 does it say, believe, believe, believe? That's what he focuses on. Because it's about what you believe. And another tip I have on soul winning is... You know, basically, to, if you want to become a good soul winner, you need to memorize the verses. You know, it's good if, if you don't have them memorized, just show them through the Bible, Romans 3.23, Romans 3.10. You know, sometimes I go soul winning at night, though, and you can't even see the verses. And other times, people are focused on you, so, you know, you don't want to take it off that focus. So you just, I just kind of quote them the verses sometimes. I don't even show it to them in the Bible. Sometimes I'll quote, most of the time, I don't quote, show most of the verses. I'll quote a lot of them. And then at the end, on the highlighted uh, verses that are really big, like believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, say, well, let me show you this one. And then they're really focused to look at that one. But, I mean, it's important if you want to become a good soul winner to have them memorized. I mean, when I, I started getting people saved in Spanish, the big reason why I got people saved, you know, after a few months after I moved down to Arizona in Spanish was because I memorized those verses. And I had them memorized within the first month or two I was down there. I memorized about 15 verses in Spanish. And, yeah, that's a large reason why I'm getting people saved in there. I mean, we need to memorize those verses. I mean, it's... 
they have to have the verses to be saved. And a lot of times you're running to someone at the grocery store. You want to talk to them. If you don't have the verses memorized, how are you going to talk to them? It's important to have those verses memorized. And the last tip I have on here is basically to become all... Like Paul said, you know, I've become all things to all people that I might by all means save some. I might have misquoted that, but he says, to the Jews I became as a Jew, to the Greeks I became as a Greek. You know, we need to become as those people to get them saved. And what about, that doesn't mean going to the bar to give someone the gospel. What I'm saying is basically like, you know, I learned Spanish because if I want to get a Hispanic person saved, I need to learn Spanish. Some of them speak English, but you know, they're more likely to listen to you if you speak Spanish, if you talk to them in Spanish. So I became as them to win them. You know, and, um, just like if you go to a group of people that's, you know, a large group of people, you know, you kind of need to take command of the situation, kind of be loud and just say, hey, let me talk to you about this. You go to church anywhere, not just talking in calm voice because they're not going to listen to you. You have to become as them to win them. You have to kind of survey the situation. And obviously, you're not going to scream at a little kid, but I mean, depending on the situation, you know, you have to kind of treat differently. That takes a lot of practice. We need to become as them to win them. So, I mean, I just wanted to give some of my soul winning tips, some of the things I've learned about soul winning. Hopefully, you know, they'll be helpful to some people because some of these things I didn't know when I first started going soul winning. And some, some of the things I've learned from other people, some of the things I've learned from practice of soul winning. And so, you know, we're just filming this video. It's uh, 4 in the morning. You know, my friends are driving me up to uh, Pittsburgh as I'm uh, going back to Arizona. So, I just wanted to film this video. And, all right.